Hello and welcome to St. David's. My name is Kristen Hawley. I'm the rector of this parish and it is my great joy and honor always to welcome you uh, to our virtual service of the Liturgy of the Word and Reflection. We are tickled that you are joining us, especially since this is a first Sunday. Friends, on the first Sunday of every month, our service is always given over to the leadership of those uh, who um, are the youngest among us. So the kids get to lead our service. Typically, when we meet in person, they do everything from ringing the bells uh, to being the ushers, helping light the candles and serve the candle or serve uh, at the altar in addition to doing the readings and oftentimes musical offerings. Uh, so I do hope that you will sit back and enjoy as much as I do, even in these virtual times, the leadership uh, of some of our youth. It also includes always a, a children's homily, which is particularly apt since this week so many of you uh, or so many of your children or grandchildren or neighbors and nieces and nephews are going back to school. So we're going to talk all about uh, what it means going back to school in 2020 and what uh, God wishes for us all as we move into this new fall. Uh, so please do join us for the rest of the service. A couple of quick announcements, uh, and I won't spend very long in them. Uh, and uh, I will point out that because of the weather, because of the rain, because of the sogginess of our grass, because our staff too have children who are all trying to get settled into new rhythms. Uh, we were not able to roll out uh, the evening prayer and morning prayer and movie the way that we had wanted to. Our movie got rained out and each time we went to pick a new date uh, for our evening prayer and morning prayer offerings outside, storms were in the forecast or someone uh, couldn't do it, usually me, because of school and getting ready for school. So hopefully in the next uh, week or so, we should settle into a nice new rhythm. But know that there are still lots of things going on online and there will be lots of things coming. Just keep an eye out on that weekly newsletter as well as our website. Should you ever wonder what's going on, anything new will always be posted in both places. We do have t-shirts that are coming out with the, uh, with the art that one of our students submitted for our art con contest uh, to help support some of the, the groups that we support in mission. I think uh, these are specifically to support the Honduras Independence Bilingual School that we support. Uh, so pl please do keep an eye out uh, for that announcement, the announcement of rolling out the t-shirts and order some for you and your family. We also have some sandwich making coming up and other great ways to just be the church. So keep an eye out for that and thank you for all that you continue to do and be uh, as we are the church outside of these walls. We are still working very hard on making sure that uh, this parish and the church inside are ready and as safe as possible for when we all can start gathering again. So working on our HVAC systems, uh, finishing up uh, all around uh, the, the church and the building and the grounds, working on all sorts of different things. You'll see that the columbarium work on the Klingle side uh, is continuing to move along and should uh, really pick up shortly since we just pulled, I think, uh, the last permit we needed to pull for the continuation of that work. If you hang out on the Macomb side of the church, you'll see that the parish house uh, is busy, busy with all sorts of contractors coming and going, and that is moving along very quickly, should be done in the next couple of weeks, the renovations on the parish house, um, along with so many other things. So know that even while you are not here, we are working and doing our very best to make sure that the property is not only kept up um, and taken care of, but it is getting prepped and ready for new life and uh, new things to happen as soon as we all get back in this space. Uh, 
So thank you to all of you who have been working uh, diligently on helping with all of these things. And thank you to all of you who continue to give and pledge to this parish and the mission of this church. Now, friends, let us take all of our joys, all of our worries, uh, all of our thoughts, and park them somewhere. Quiet your minds so that we can enter into this time of worship and give ourselves to God and one another and then be refreshed and recharged anew to re-enter the world. So let us walk in love as Christ loved us and for the sake of love gave everything. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Friends, the Lord be with you. Let us pray. Grant us, O Lord, to trust in you with all our hearts. For as you always resist the proud who confide in their own strength, so you never forsake those who make their boast of your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. And now for our readings. Hallelujah. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing his praise in the congregation of the faithful. Let Israel rejoice in his maker. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praise to him with timbrel and heart. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people and adorns the poor of victory. Let the faithful rejoice in, in, in triumph. Let them be joyful on their beds. Let the praises of God be in their throat and a two-edged sword in their hand to wreak vengeance on the nations and punishment on the people to bind their kings in chains and their nobles with links of iron, to inflict them on the judgment decreed. This is glory for all his faithful people. Alleluia.
reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Jesus said, If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you, so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. From where two or three are gathered in my name, I was there among them. The word of the Lord. friends. It's another year and we are back to back at school. Most of you, many of you uh, who are of a school age have found yourselves getting ready for some sort of school, college, preschool, whether it's in your house or in person or in a dorm, but online, a hybrid course, Whatever that looks like, we are so glad that you get to begin another school year this school year. But it is different, isn't it? Just look behind me. On a regular school year, we would all be filling these pews, gathering around you for the back to school and backpack blessings. You would all be bringing one of these uh, up to the front where we would bless them and then bless you and your teachers. This year is a very different year. Some of you don't even get out of your pajamas to get to school these days. So let's talk about that. Because I know that there are a lot of you and a lot of your parents and a lot of the world who are very worried and anxious right now that school isn't going to go as well as it should, that it's not going to be normal for so many of you. Let's talk about those things. What's different? What's the same? And what things might even be better? And let's start with your backpack. Now normally you would bring your backpack and we would give you some sort of blessing and sometimes we even give you a tag that goes on your backpack. I was on my way into the church today when I pulled out my keys and on my keys is one of the many backpack tags that I have uh, made and handed out over, this, over the years. This one says, loved no matter what, right? So if you were to take your backpack now or your desk or wherever it is that you're doing your work, what do you have in it? What are you putting in it this year? What are the important things that you've decided to gather and get ready so that this is a good year for you at school? I'm gonna show you what I have, not in my backpack because I don't generally bring my backpack with me, but I always have my purse with me. I'm gonna show you a special purse that a, a friend of mine gave me just before the pandemic started because she thought uh, it reminded her of summertime and uh, it was just a happy 
purse and she thought I might want and need one too. Uh, so thank you, uh, friend, for giving me this because in the midst of this time and pandemic, I've chosen to use this all summer long just because the bag itself reminds me of friendship and of sunshine, which makes me happy. But when I walk around, I am the normal mother that has everything under the sun in my bag. Can you imagine the things that are in my bag? I won't bring them all out for you, of course, but like any good mother, there's usually gum and tissues and my keys and a snack. Here's my apple that I put in there today. I've got my, my wallet and a brush and some lip gloss and all of those things that I know that I need on a regular basis to make me feel better or to help somebody else. Over years of practice, I've figured out the things that are most often needed and I try to carry them whenever I can in this bag. And this year is a little bit different. This year I also have masks, right? Masks of all shapes and sizes and colors. I even have a mask, an extra mask uh, for George, our two-year-old, just in case he loses the one that he leaves the house with. Uh, I always now have gloves, uh, rubber gloves, uh, latex gloves, if I go to the grocery store or to the gas station or any places that I feel like I need to wear those, right? That makes my bag a little bit different this year, doesn't it? Because never before have I walked around with latex gloves and masks in my bag. But this year is different, so my bag is different. When I'm traveling with George, my bag has different things in it because I know that I have him with me. I'm a priest, so in my bag, it's probably different than maybe your mom's bag or your grandmom's bag, right? I always have a book of prayers uh, easily accessible in my bag. I also usually have a cross or something to give people if they need it. Uh, I also always have uh, oil. It's a, a little thing of oil for healing. If um, I'm out and about and need to go visit someone in the hospital or at their home who's sick so I can pray with them and bless them. If you look in your bags, you can tell a lot, not just about the person, but about, about also what's important and who's important to that person, right? Now that's just my purse, friends, right? I got my sunglasses, uh, I usually have my laptop because I'm always working, never from work anymore, but from the car or my house or anywhere else. So that's just what's in my purse. But then usually along with my purse, I'm always carrying other bags, right? So on my way into church today, because I'm doing all of uh, the recording for you for this service, uh, I have this bag. Now this bag we didn't have for out for a really long time, but it's the perfect bag to carry all of the things that I need for recording. Lights, tripods, uh, things to hold the camera, microphones, all of that. So today that's my other bag that I'm carrying with me. Why? Because that's my job and those things help me do my job better. So when you think about your backpack, you think about your desk, and you think about this year, wherever it is that you are doing your schoolwork, whether you're in a dorm, or in your bedroom, or at the kitchen, or actually in a classroom, what are the things that make this year different that are in your backpack and in your spot? And what are the things that you can add to those places, that backpack, or your desk, or your room, that reminds you of sunshine and friendship, reminds you that you are loved no matter what, that reminds you that the important piece is always that you are loved and called to love. School's important, don't get me wrong, 
But God reminds us again and again and again that the most important thing in our lives is to remember and to know in our very heart of hearts that we are loved exactly the way we are and that we are asked to love others in the same way. And if we can remember those things, I believe in my heart of hearts that school will not be a bust this year. You see, this isn't a year that we just have to get through, friends. It's not just a, a gap in the rest of all of your years. This is a school year. This is your life. And we need to live it the very best way we possibly can. It may be very different than most school years, but it's not something to just try and get through until real life comes back. This is your real life. This is real school. You are really loved, and you are called to do the same. That is the exciting and wonderful news that God tells us every single time he speaks to us through prayer, through silence, through friends, right? That is the heart of the gospel and the heart of why we bless you and your backpacks and your teachers and this year your parents every year to remind you of what's most important so that you can be the very best student, the very best teacher, the very best parent that you possibly can be right now this year. And now, friends, a prayer. Will you join me? Thank you, God, for new opportunities to learn and grow, whether it be in an actual classroom, a virtual classroom, or from a dorm room, or the kitchen table. Be with our teachers, our leaders, our parents, our caregivers, as they guide us into the new school year. Give them the tools and energy to create engaging ways for all of us to learn and grow. Help us to open our hearts and minds to new ideas, to new friends and leaders and new ways of learning. Show us how to seek joy in all things. And when things don't go as planned, help us to rejoice in the newness. When we have technical difficulties, help us rejoice in simple things like books and crayons. When we feel lonely or isolated, remind us that you are by our side. When our teachers and caregivers seem worried, help them to be gentle with themselves. And as we begin to explore the unknown of this school year, let us rejoice with new friends and new ways of learning and knowing that you are with us through it all. And now, all of you watching, if you would raise your hands and help me bless these children. God of joy and light, pour out your blessing upon these students these families, these teachers and leaders. Bless their backpacks, bless their Chromebooks, computers, virtual classrooms, school buildings, and all preparations to help build a strong and safe year for everyone. Remind them of your love and call to love and live into whatever world they find themselves in. May each of you be a blessing and light in your new year. Go and light up the world. Amen.
Let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. O oh God, we pray for the church throughout the world, that her members, ministers, and ministries may be agents of your forgiveness and grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our nation, our leaders, and all who labor to make this country free and a land of blessing, justice, and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the world that you would pass through our lands and once again bring freedom and life for all your children. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who are starting a new school year, that you bless them with courage, joyful anticipation, and inquiring hearts and minds. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the sick, the suffering, the dying, and all those who live in a wake of fear, especially Rob, Mike Covert, George Coleman, Paul, and Kathleen. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the faithful departed, that now wearing the armor of light, they may rest forever in your peace and presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, we give thanks for work and for the many works you have given us to do. Hear our prayers on this day of rest and strengthen us for the week ahead. We pray that you would be present with those who work by day and those who work by night, those who work near and those who works carries them far from away. And we pray for those who in this uncertain time have no job. We pray for all of this knowing that your labors on our behalf never cease, and that your yoke is easy and your burden is light. Amen. All these prayers and those written in the silence of our hearts, we offer up to God as we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. Friends, life is short and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those we travel with. So be swift to love and make haste to be kind. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon each of you and those beloved to you this day and always. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.